I'm sorry. Okay. Just letting you know. I can imagine. I can imagine. I'm trying to make sure. Okay. She's fine. join us tonight for our Wednesday night service and uh, glad that you're here make sure you check in with the on the comment section let us know that you're here and also if you have a prayer request send it in through comments and through uh, texting through 559-554-2741 and uh, that I've gotten some prayer requests and even some praise reports through that already this week so uh, then just, uh, we're looking for a great time tonight. I'm glad that you could be here. So uh, take your hymn book if you have one, the well-known song tonight, number three, Amazing Grace. Brother Jonathan, please. Good evening. Let's take our song book. Song number three, Amazing Grace. We'll sing all four verses this evening. Song number three, Amazing Grace. Join me on the first verse.
song number 10, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Song number one zero, we'll see all three verses this evening. Song number one zero on the first verse. I have decided. seconds here, just a little bit more time for prayer requests. Uh, if you have one, just uh, go ahead and chime in for us and let us know so that we can pray for you. And uh, Brother Josh has an unspoken. So we'll certainly pray about that. And uh, All right, let's uh, let's uh, go to the okay. Pray for the Tony family on Friday. They are having their memorial service. Is that correct, Miss Joyce? Text, let me know. Comment in there. Let, let us know. I believe that's what the prayer request is concerning the uh, the uh, memorial service for her niece is on uh, Friday. So we want to pray about that. And uh, so let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight, Father. We, we do thank you that we have this avenue by which we can come into the very throne room. Lord, we do not have to worry about or be concerned about whether or not we'll be accepted when we come to your throne room. Your door is always open to us. And so, Father, tonight as we come into your presence, we just are thankful for the avenue of prayer by which we can unburden our hearts 
we can bring our needs, we can intercede for others, and know that you are here, that you have compassion and mercy and grace to help in time of need. Father, there were many unspoken prayer requests mentioned tonight. Uh, Brother Josh has one. Miss Gloria has one. Brother Cosby has two. I know there are other unspoken prayer requests that are listed on our burden bearer. Lord, in each situation, you know the need. You know how serious the situation is, and you know the answer. We ask you to work in each of these unspoken prayer requests. We ask you to meet each need there, Lord, and we ask that you would be honored and glorified. We ask that you would also, Father, uh, show yourself strong on behalf of each of these unspoken prayer requests. We pray for Lynette Mapalo, Lord, this young lady that has cancer and the doctors are not giving much hope, Lord, and we pray, we pray that you would put your hand upon her, Lord, and uh, that you would strengthen her, Lord, and, and, and Lord, we just pray that you give grace and comfort to her family. Lord, I pray for Miss Laura tonight, uh, who's having a real struggle with her arms and her hands, Lord, and just having a difficult time even lifting them. We ask that you would work and, and that you would meet the need and that you would relieve that, Lord, and, and help her with that, Lord. And Father, we pray tonight that you'd be with the Tony family as they'll be having a memorial service on Friday. Lord, you know, uh, I just ask you to comfort hearts and pray, pray that your grace and mercy would abound toward this family. And Lord, I pray that they would turn to you in this time of need and allow you to work in their life. Lord, we pray for Brother Jobs. He has a, a test, a physical test coming up for Police Academy on the 9th. We ask that you would make it possible that his shoulder would not be a problem for him. We pray that you might help him to do well, to do his best. We ask that you give him physical strength for the day. Lord, I do ask that you be with our church. Lord, we have been spending now 30 days praying and asking for revival. Lord, I've been asking you to work in my heart, and, and I know you have, and, and, and I pray that, that we'll be different. There'll be a new zeal, a new fire, a new desire in our church to accomplish something great for you. That we might uh, pray like Jabez, that you would enlarge our coast. We ask you to do that, Lord. We ask you to be with the service tonight. We ask you to speak to hearts. And, and Lord, that you would just bless in a very special way tonight. We pray these things now in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. All right, yes, I got a, a, a Miss uh, Joyce did say that the memorial service is for her niece, Natasha, so keep that in prayer. Uh, let me just quickly give some announcements tonight. Uh, all of our services will be uploaded on the YouTube channel. We hope before long that we'll be able to live stream on YouTube as well. We're waiting, we're, we, we've made a, a signing agreement with a new, uh, internet provider that we trust will give us uh, much better internet in here so that we can do what we need to do so keep that in prayer if you would and uh, then just a reminder on our 30 days of prayer and fasting we got one more day to go um, tomorrow's the last day of that but could i encourage you um, to continue to pray earnestly for revival for revival in our individual hearts, for revival in our church, for revival in our community, uh, and revival in our country. We just continue to pray. I would say this, God is working. God has done so many things, even in these last few days. I, 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 today, I was in my car, and, and, and I'll tell you more about it. But I, if, if you could jump in your car, I was jumping in my car today. And so it was just, listen, God is working, and I'm looking forward to what God is going to do when we come out of this completely and, uh, and just excited about what God is doing. Then one thing that I do want to announce tonight, uh, all of you children are listening. Sunday night after the service, we're going to have a drive-by candy line here at the church. So as soon as the service is over, Mom and Dad, load up the kids. 
drive by the church. We'll have the center gate open and the exit gate open. And just come in and drive by. He said, I don't have any kids. If you want to come by and just say hi, we'll be here. We're just going to have a good time on, on Sunday night. You can just drive by. I'll invite everybody to come. So it will take a, a few minutes for everybody to get here. But just as soon as you can get done from the service, just drive on by and we'll just go through. And Mrs. King and I will be out there and we'll howdy with you a little bit. And we'll have some candy for the kids. And, and uh, we'll just see what uh, the Lord will do with that. I'm excited about that. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And again, let me say thank you to all of you for the parade. I, I have, we have received so many comments on that pastor appreciation parade. Uh, Brother Schrock even commented, well, no, if we do an evangelist appreciation parade, he'd give us his address. I don't know how we would do that in South Carolina, but uh, uh, at any rate, so uh, those, are, those are the things, those are the announcements that we have and also now it's time for our offering that's the end of the month i understand that the first of the month is right around the corner so again here's how you give you can you can contact me and, and, and i can meet you here or something and or i'll come get it you can put it in the mail to the church 1010 west rangeville boulevard here in hanford uh, you can go online and uh, you can give online and um and then you can text it or you can do a bill pay from your trip from your bank and send that to our address here at the church 1010 west rangeville boulevard so those are all the ways so uh, it's time for offering and so uh would you play a verse for offering and let me pray as you can start playing and i'll pray for the offering and uh, then we'll keep the service moving heavenly father thank you for the faithfulness of your people They've been so good to give during this very unusual time. Father, bless them for their faithfulness. Bless them for their giving and their faith. And bless the offering. Meet each need we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. start on that last one there. I was trying to help Jonathan out. I was in a different key than he was in, and we were both in a different key than Miss Carol was in. But we got there. We were kind of flying in a scattered formation, but we came in for a good landing, so we're doing well. Hey, take your Bible tonight. Psalm number 7. And uh, there is a lot 
in this little song tonight. Psalm number seven. We'll read the entire psalm and we're going to work our way through this tonight. The, the, the psalmist David says, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him that without cause is mine enemy. Let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yea, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust. Selah. Arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies and awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. So shall the congregation of the people come pass thee about for their sakes, therefore, return thou on high. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just. For the righteous God triumph the hearts and reigns. My God, my defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he traveleth with iniquity and hath conceived mischief and hath brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it, and is fallen into the pit ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. And we don't know the circumstances behind this. Uh, it just says here in, in, in the title, it's a Sigion of David, which he sang unto the Lord concerning the words of Cush, the Benjamite. Maybe that's Shimei when he left Jerusalem. Absalom was chasing him. We know that Shimei threw rocks and threw dust and cursed him and, and said all these horrible things. And Abishai, uh, the son of Zariah, wanted to just kill Shimei and David said, no, leave him alone. The Lord hath ordained this. And, and then David dealt with it later and ended up letting Solomon deal with it even as in Solomon's days. But this, this word Shigion, the psalm is called a Shigion. That's a, the best definition I can come up with is this is not really talking about an instrument. It's, it's, it's a type of music. This is a lyrical poem that's composed under strong mental emotion. There's a lot of emotion in this. That's the idea. David is trying to convey his emotion. And, uh, and he's dealing with the issue of justice. Now, let's, I'm titling this a prayer for justice. So maybe it is dealing with that time of Shimei. Uh, but uh, he's praying for justice here. Justice the one dictionary definition I came up with says this. The virtue which consists in giving to everyone what is his due. Well, nobody's better at that than God. Nobody's better at giving people what is their due than God. Theologically, justice is who God is. God is holy. And, part, and, and you can divide his holiness into three areas. Righteousness, justice, and wrath. God is holy. That's who he is. So justice is who God is, and justice is the execution of God's righteousness. And we human beings like to think that we're just, but in reality, we're not. Our judicial system is designed to balance mercy and justice. But too often, it goes one way or the other very heavily. And usually, 
it leans one way or the other, not based on right and wrong, but it usually leans one way or the other based on feelings. How we feel at that moment. And that's not that's not accurate. That's not how we ought to do, to, do things. And so, uh, while we're not told the exact circumstances of this particular song, we all have been in situations where we felt like we were wronged. Where somebody did wrong, somebody said things wrong, uh, we were not treated fairly, uh, the reason that we were not treated fairly had nothing to do with right or wrong. It had to do with how somebody felt at the time. We've all been in those kinds of circumstances. And we've all been tempted to get even, haven't we? My favorite bumper sticker, and I've said this, I've, I've just taken this as a saying. I really don't mean it, but I, I'll say this. I don't get even. I get ahead. That's kind of our attitude, isn't it? We're, we, we, we're unwilling to give room and give space to people. Somebody wrongs us, well, we're going to get back out. We're going to right the wrong. But I, I want you to see in this that while we can identify circumstances where we're under pressure, the, the, these things happen. They bring pressure for us to compromise or even commit sin. So David is facing this great pressure from some injustice that could lead him to a place of compromise in his life or even a place of sin in his life. Instead, he goes to God. And how many times have we let the guard down and done the wrong thing because somebody else did the wrong thing? And we've said it was okay because they did the wrong thing. Well, folks, somebody once said two wrongs never make a right. Dr. Bob Jones Sr. used to say, do right until the stars fall, do right. And so we're to do right no matter what anyone else does. And David is, is facing a situation here, and he's facing circumstances that are putting pressure on him to give in to compromise, to sin, and he says, I'm not doing it, I'm going to trust the Lord. So there are, if you've got your notes in your bulletin, there's five divisions here, and we'll go through all five of them, but I'm not going to take a long time on all five of them. Nobody in here better say amen. We have some folks sitting in here helping me with stuff that want 15-minute messages because they're wicked and they're not spiritual and they can't handle preaching. So at any rate, here we go. Number one, notice there's a cry for deliverance. There's a cry for deliverance. Now watch this, verse 1 and 2. O oh Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to do it. Now notice something here as David presents this cry of deliverance. Notice it's a personal cry. If you have your Bible, I want you to mark the second word of this chapter. And it's the same word, the second word in verse 3. Lord. And notice it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. This is Jehovah. The Jews did not use the name Jehovah in their everyday conversations. This was a holy name to them. But notice what David says. O Jehovah, my God, in thee do I put my trust. He's using personal pronouns here. And he's including the most holy name that the Jews have for the name of Jehovah. If you remember back in Exodus chapter 3, when Moses asked God, uh, I've got to go before the people and I've got to tell them you've sent me. They're going to want to know your name. What do I tell them? God said in Exodus 3 and verse 14, I am that I am. That's Jehovah. Because God knew if Moses said Jehovah sent me, it would have the people's attention. So here's David addressing God as Jehovah. 
the self-existent, covenant-keeping God, and he's not just addressing him kind of in a general sense. He's addressing him personally. It's a personal cry. Oh, Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. So he's referring to Jehovah personally, but notice it's also a passionate cry. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Now, David is not trusting his ability to get this done. Now, now, now listen to me. Study the life of David. You know what you'll find? He never lost a war. He never lost a battle. If there was someone who had the ability to fight his enemies and win, it was David. But David's not trusting his ability. He's not trusting his education. He's not trusting his understanding of people. His trust is in the Lord. Save me. Save me. Lord, it's a personal thing. I, here's a passionate cry. Lord, save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. So we see a cry for deliverance. And then he follows that up next with a confession of righteousness. And you'll find that David does this all the time. And every time I read David doing this in the psalm, it challenges me. Watch what he says here in verse 3. Oh, Lord, my God. There it goes again. Oh, Jehovah, my God. If I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, then a secondary thought here, yea, I have delivered him that without cause is my enemy. Let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yea, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust. First of all, there's a, in this confession of righteousness, what David is saying is, Lord, you know I'm right. Lord, you know I'm clean before you. Can we say that tonight? How confident could we be to go before God and intercede and ask for his help on something on the basis, Lord, you know I've been living, right? That's what David is doing. And, and notice in this confession of righteousness that there's a passion defense. He says, I have done right. Verse number three through five, three and four. I have done right. Oh, Lord, I have done this. Or if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, what's he say? I've done right. I've treated people right. Last part of verse 48, I have delivered him that without cause is my enemy. You know why we should treat people right? Because it's right. You don't treat people right because they burnt it. We don't treat people right because they deserve it, they're worthy of it. We treat people right because it's right to do. Maybe they've done us wrong. We still treat right. Notice what he says in the last part of verse 4. Yea, I have delivered him that without cause is my enemy. David said, there's some people that have just chosen to be my enemies. I haven't done anything to them to cause them to be my enemies, but they're my enemies, and I've been good to them. Even when they chose to be my enemies. You and I may not always be treated right, but we still do right. Now, notice here that David had, there's a promised acceptance with this confession of righteousness. What I mean by that is, David is willing to accept God's judgment in his life. Look what he says in verse four, 5. Verse 3 and 4, he says, If I've done these things, verse 5, let the, enemy, let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yea, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay my honor in the dust. See, look, I wonder, could we really pray that with a confidence that that's not going to happen because we've done right? He's promising to God, I'll accept your judgment in this situation. I know I've done right. I know I'm clean before you. I, I'm reminded of the story that Dr. Gibbs told about when he was defending Dr. Lester Roloff down in Corpus Christi, Texas, many, 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 many years ago. 
and there was a lot of lawyers on the other side, and he, Dr. Roloff had Dr. Gibbs, that was his one lawyer, and things were not going well, and Dr. Gibbs met Dr. Roloff at the hotel room early one morning, and Dr. Roloff looked at Dr. Gibbs, he said, are you clean before God? Well, I think so. He said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go in this corner over here, and I'm going to pray, and you go over here in this corner, and you pray, and let's get clean before God. And when I heard Dr. Gibbs tell the story, he said, I didn't know a whole lot about all of that. He said, I just know this. I wasn't going to stop praying until Dr. Roloff stopped praying. <laughs> and they prayed, he prayed for a while, and then Dr. Roloff prayed because he got clean with God. He prayed and asked God to throw confusion amongst all of those lawyers and to make the judge physically sick. And they get to court. Now this whole time, as Dr. Gibbs laid out the story, there's several attorneys on this other side. They've all been in agreement right down the line. There's been no disagreement among them. They're all on the same page. And they get to court that day and they can't agree on anything. And the judge says, are you ready to go? And they said, no, sir, we're not. We can't agree on anything over here. And they said, we don't understand what's happening. We, we've been in agreement. Now all of a sudden we can't agree on anything. We don't know what's going on. And, and Dr. Gibbs said, Dr. Roloff's sitting there and tugged on his arm and said, should I tell the judge what I prayed about for him? He said, no, 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 hush. We're winning. You see, if we're clean before God, we can accept whatever God has. I'm wondering if there are times when we're not willing to accept God's righteousness in our life because we're not clean before Him. We need to make sure we're clean. Hopefully, during this 30 days of prayer and fasting, we've done some cleaning up. Maybe the Lord has given us some victory over some things in our life and we've gotten some things cleaned up. That's great because if we're clean before God, we're in a place to ask God for big things. Notice the next thing. There's a call for judgment. Verse 6 through 10. Now he says, Arise, O Lord, in thine anger, lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies, and awake to me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. So shall the congregation of people compass thee about. For their sakes, therefore, return thou on high. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity that is in me. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God tri triumph the hearts and reigns. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. Now notice in this call for judgment, two quick things here. Number one, there's a plea for judgment, or for, for action. There's a plea for action. Lord, rise up. Lord, go get them. That's, that's basically what David's saying. Look at verse 6. He says, O, arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Lift up thyself before the, because of the rage of mine enemies. He said, Lord, go get them. Now, he's not trusting himself. He wasn't going to take things into his own hands. He was going to let God do that, and he knew that it would work out better if God did do it. But there's this plea for action. God, you get involved. Now, notice verse 7. And verse 8, 9, and 10 talks about God defending and what have you, but there's a purpose of justice here. He says in verse 7, So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about. For their sakes, therefore, return thou on high. The purpose of God being just in your life and my life is not necessarily or not solely for the purpose of getting us out of some situations. Ultimately, the purpose of justice is that God would be on it. And it would cause people to see His holiness. David just lifts up God here. He says, the congregation of the people can pass him out. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord. Uh, verse 10, my defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. Listen, he's just saying, Lord, I'm asking you for action, but I want it to be done in a way that you get the glory, that you're honored. I wonder, do we live each day with the idea that God would be honored with my thoughts, that God would be honored 
with my actions, that God would be honored with my language, that God would be honored with everything about me. That ought to be our thought every day. So as David called for judgment, he wanted to make sure that God was honored. Notice the next thing. There's a confession of justice. He called for mercy or for deliverance. He followed that up with a confession of righteousness. Lord, deliver me. I've been right. Now, Lord, I'm asking you to get involved. I'm asking you to act. But God, I'm going to confess some things about justice. Look at verse 11. God judges the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. And when you start reading in verse 12, he's not talking about God here. Verse 12 starts talking about the wicked. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He hath ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity and hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He hath made a pit and digged it and is fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head and violent dealing shall come down upon his own pain. So now there's this confession of justice and he says in verse 11 that God is powerful. He talks about a powerful God and he says that God judges the righteous. God always judges rightly. God always will do the right thing in our life. We can depend on that. He is holy. Therefore, God cannot ever do that which is wrong. We may not see it. We may not understand it. We may go through some circumstances where we feel like this is wrong. This just doesn't seem right. But God is right. And God is holy. And he judges right. And the last part of verse 10 is, or verse 11 is an awfully harsh statement. But David says God is angry with the wicked every day. That doesn't mean that you and I get to be that way. But God is. And, and it, when we look at that and we understand how powerful God is, then we have to understand this. It's not up to me to chase the wicked. That's not my job. That's God's job. And we live in a day and age where there are wicked people around us. There were wicked people around David. It's not any different. We have a tendency to look at our day and age and we're experiencing it, so therefore it's worse than any other time. It's worse now than it's ever been. No, not really. Man has been man since God created man. Can I remind you, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, the thoughts and intents of man's heart are only evil continually. There's always been wicked. There's always been unrighteousness. And God is angry with that. It doesn't please God. And by the way, when you and I do wrong, when you and I sin, that doesn't please God either. It's not like he looks at us differently. We're his children. He's going to chasten his children. And so we see that there's a powerful God. But notice next, there's a poor description of the wicked. By that I mean, and I, I, that may not have been the best part of this message, but it's I'm trying to alliterate this thing here. Not always great at it. But, but look at his description of the wicked. Verse 12. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. Who wet it means he's sharpening it. He had been his bow and hath made it ready. He also hath prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity and hath conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. And so this, this is a, just a poor example of mankind, the wicked. They turn away from God. They have an appetite for sin. They're prepared to sin. And they gladly look on the pain of those who suffer. That's just how they are. 
And he's not saying that's a good description of them. I've told this story before, but there was a story years ago, or at least it was a story that was told, whether it was true or, or actually happened or not, I don't know. But the story goes that there was these two gentlemen that lived in this one community, and they were both just vile, wicked men. They were brothers. They hated everybody. They mistreated everybody. They were mean and nasty to everybody. And one day, one of them died. No preacher in town even wanted to do the funeral. But the surviving brother not only wanted to have a funeral, but he wanted to get a preacher to say that his brother was a saint. And he finally offered this preacher a thousand dollars to do the funeral if he would say that his brother was a saint and the preacher said, okay, I'll do it. And it came time in the service for the eulogy to talk about his life and the preacher stood up there and he said, now this fellow laying in the grave was wicked, vile, he was a drunkard, a womanizer, and he went through all the things that everybody knew about it. and he said, but compared to his brother right there, he was a saint. Now that's what, David is, is, is not being that graphic here, but he's basically saying these people, the wicked, they don't, have a, they don't have a good reputation. And then he says, now watch what he's done. He's described them and he's given a poor description of them. And then he gives a promised end. Sometimes we look at the wicked and we, we live in a world where we look around and we say, well, it just seems like, People that do wrong and live wrong, people that hate God seem to be prospering. Well, it may seem that way, but hold on. Later in the Psalms, David had that attitude. Why are the wicked prospering? He didn't understand it. And he said this, until I went into the house of the Lord and understood therein. So he talks about it here. Look at verse 15. He, this is the wicked man, he made a pit and digged it. Well, why did he make a pit? He made it for somebody else to fall into but he says, and he's fallen into the ditch which he made. In other words, he's going to fall by his own devices. He's going to get tripped up by his own things. Verse 16, his mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pain. Which is another way of saying the head. See what he's saying? It may look like the wicked is winning, but ultimately, no, their wickedness will turn on them. And so, there's a promise in. Why? This is a confession of justice. So David has had a cry for deliverance and a call for a confession of righteousness, a call for judgment, and a confession of justice. So how are we going to end this? We'll look at verse 17. There's a commitment to worship. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. And will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. David praises his righteousness. And David praises his name. But here's what David is saying. Remember how he started this. O oh Lord, my God. It was personal. You know what David's saying? Through this whole thing, here's what he's saying. God, I'm going to trust you to take care of them. And I'm going to keep walking with you. Whatever they do, it's not going to change my relationship with you. I'm telling you right now, Here's my commitment. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to walk with you. Hey, these are trying times. I get it. I understand it. And we may look at all the circumstances and we may question this decision or that decision and we may not like this decision or that decision and, and I'm in there with you on some of this. I get it. But you know what we have to determine what we're going to do? No matter what anything happens, no matter what anybody else does, I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to be right with God and I'm going to be right with people. And I'm not going to let anything change that. 
Do you understand tonight how much impact we could have on this area if we just decide we're going to be right with God and right with people, period? No telling who we might have the opportunity to lead to the Lord. Listen, let's worship the Lord. Worship the Lord is not something we do just in a church service. It's something we do every day. We worship the Lord when we honor the Lord in our life. We have got to get past this idea, folks. This part of my life is my walk with God. This part of my life is mine. No, no. This life that I have, all of it, is part of my walk with God. David says, no matter what they do, Lord, you take care of it. You have it. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to walk with you. Tonight, would you just make a, a decision in your heart and your mind that you're just going to walk with God no matter what anybody does? That you're going to walk with God and you're going to worship God and you're going to honor God no matter what happens? Doesn't matter how I feel, doesn't matter what anybody says, I'm going to worship him. I'm going to walk with him. David said, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. And I will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high. That's right. Father, tonight, thank you for speaking to our hearts. Thank you for this precious song. Lord, David went through a lot of things. We see a lot of emotion there. The, the type of psalm it is was is apparently written with strong mental emotions is what we learn. So it was a lot of emotion. And David summed it up by saying, I will praise him, the Lord, according to his righteousness. I will sing praise to his name. Lord, may each of us tonight decide right now in our heart, come what may, we're going to walk with you. Come what may, we're going to worship you. We're going to honor you. Would you help us tonight? Now our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. And you're making maybe an altar out of your sofa there or wherever you're watching this service. Maybe it's mom and dad and children watching together. Maybe dad, you'd get the children involved in prayer right now and say, you know what? Our house is going to worship the Lord. Our house is going to serve the Lord. Would you make that commitment to him tonight? Would you say, Lord, I, I'm just going to, no matter what anybody does, I'm going to worship you. No matter how people treat me, I'm going to stay right. How about it tonight? Because Miss Hannah plays a little bit of an invitation song. Would you pray right now? Say, Lord, help me to just walk with you. She's playing the chorus we sang a little earlier. I have decided to follow Jesus. Would you make that your prayer tonight? Doesn't matter what the politicians do, I'm going to walk with you. Doesn't matter what somebody at work does, I'm going to walk with you. It doesn't even matter what a family member does, I'm going to walk with you. Tonight, would you make that commitment to him? Lord, I'm going to worship you. Tonight, these folks are praying. Their hearts are bowed to you. Decisions are being made. I pray you would be honored with those decisions. I pray, dear God, that you would help us to keep the commitments we make to you tonight. Lord, may we just determine. Come what may, we're going to walk with you. We're going to worship you. 
thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your blessings. And thank you for the opportunity to have church even though it's live stream. We praise you for the, the technology that allows us to still have church. We love you. And help us to just walk with you and honor you day by day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, wonderful. It's good to, I say it's good to be here, and it is, but I, I've got to tell you, I'm going to have to sit down and talk with my family tonight. I'm not sure what happened. I, I, when I preach, I read people. Well, there's just empty chairs in here to nobody. To, I can't see them. I can't read them. And I'm preaching, and I'm preaching a pretty serious point, and I'm watching some of my family cracking up, laughing. Of course it was Jim Nelson. Whatever. Choke. Whatever. So it wasn't just people here being wicked. The deacon was being wicked as well. I see how that works. So brother, brother, brother Mio sitting here tonight. Well, he was well behaved tonight. He didn't. He wasn't. <laughs> hey, listen. Isn't it going to be fun when we can get back together? I, and and it's going to be a great day when that happens. You'll be praying for that. Pray for your preacher for wisdom uh, to to know exactly what to do, how to do it. Uh, these are, I, I've had, I've had, I had a preacher call me today, and uh, he asked me, and in fact, Miss Kate is Brother Gerberts, called me today. He said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm just trying to find out what other preachers are doing. Because a lot of preachers are getting antsy, and they're wanting to go back to church, and I understand that. So pray that God will give us wisdom. That we'll do the right thing. Ask God to continue to meet needs, and He has. He has done some marvelous things, even this week. And so continue to pray for that. I love you. I miss you. I'm praying for you. I can't wait until we're together. We will see you. Don't forget, are you Friday night, 7 o'clock, in the same format that we've been doing? We'll see you on Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, live stream. Miss Anna, play a little bit for us. Mm -hmm. 